everybody it's day 128 of the be fantastic road tour i'm gonna go on the mississippi river on a river boat and give you a nice tour another paid attraction courtesy of dr fantastic you don't have to leave the comfort of your home it doesn't cost you a dime just stay, grab a beer relax and enjoy a fantastic tour let me turn the camera around for you real quick show you where we're walking to and it looks like there's a little helicopter taking off for a helicopter tour and there's the famous arch did a video on that a couple weeks ago maybe a month ago and today is a gorgeous day not too hot not too cold great day for a riverboat cruise stay tuned everybody let's have some fun and there he goes you know you could take these kind of tours from mount rushmore i've seen them Crazy Horse, um, all over the place. A lot of fun to take a helicopter tour. There she is in all her glory, archway to the west. Flags blowing in the wind. There's the helicopter that took off. And there's the riverboat cruise I'm going on. There we go, let's have some fun. Looks like we're going above, uh, aboard the Tom Sawyer. As, oil, as always, it's a virtual reality tour. Actually, I should have brought my virtual reality camera, but just a regular tour today. Always the top deck, it's always the best view. And here it is, the Tom Sawyer. There's a nice little spot here people have. Back over here. I think we're gonna sit right here. Hey everybody, I'm on the Mississippi. I'm with Jim, who's been captaining the, uh, the river for 43 years. And, and the same boat or no? Different boats. No, different boats, different rivers. Different rivers? Oh, yes. uh, what's your favorite river? Uh, the uh, Tennessee River. Tennessee River, why is that? It's absolutely, it's, this place is so industrial through here. That place is just absolutely magnificent. The, uh, the uh, clear water, the uh, uh, landscapes, the uh, just, just the wildlife, it's just, it's, it's Marvelous. And yep. do they have um, like overnight cruises and things like that, or just a day cruises on the uh, on, on our boat here, we, we only have uh, day cruises, yeah, and then dinner cruises. Okay, but on the in the Tennessee, how far is that from here, the Tennessee River? Uh, Tennessee River from here is 180 miles south down to Paducah. You make a left turn and you're up about 50 miles, I think it is. Oh, so where it starts at down in uh, Paducah. Okay, I was at Nashville recently. I can understand now. That's a Cumberland River that goes through Nashville. Oh, okay, but they're both. Beautiful rivers side by side. Yeah, yeah. Now, Mississippi is the longest river, right? Uh, Mississippi and Missouri are pretty close to one another at 2,400 miles. Uh -huh. And what are we going to see today in this cruise? We're going to go upstream here for about a half an hour there, and it looks like we got some uh, towboats working up in the area there. You get to, we get to talk about them. We get to see some interest. Like I said, we're very industrial here at the harbor. Uh, it's the second largest, uh, second largest uh, people holding uh, our harbor taking product in and out of barges gotcha so we have uh, we have over 20 yard year uh 20 miles of uh different docks for different products gotcha up and down the river through st louis here. okay yeah it's quite the city uh yes and of course we're sitting here because of that big silver thing sitting up here right next to <laughs> exactly it is yeah. a big silver thing yes it is and is, is that closed still no no it is now opened up oh it's opened up yes sir. oh last time i was here it was closed yes sir i might have to go up there they uh they opened the bottom here about a month ago the visitor center and the uh, uh museum and uh, two weeks ago a week and a half ago limited going up to the top there oh i might have to check that out yes sir yeah because um i'm going all over the country bringing entertainment to the people that can't leave their home i i, I, I understand know? that absolutely i'm risking my life for their enjoyment <laughs> you know no it's getting you out of the house exactly absolutely. exactly I was up in Sturgis. With, um, I got 85,000 views for my Sturgis videos. Uh, fantastic. That was fantastic. Exactly. 
So um, this is going to be a fun little t- tour. Absolutely. Yeah. So what was an hour and a half, I guess? One like hour. One hour. Yes, sir. Sounds fantastic. Thank you for your time. It's not a problem. Well, are you, at where all. are you from, by the way? Saint, I am from St. Louis. Saint, St. Yes. Louis. That's fantastic. Started down here in 1975 at high school. as a, a decade. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you're loving it. Absolutely. They say if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, it has good days and bad days where I agree with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Not a problem at all. Right, we got you all the way. Loading, unloading. Looks like he's heading back down to his food to grab another bar to take to one of his docks. You see uh, the workers on the river here. They push the barges up and down the river. We're allowed to push up to 15 barges because the lock and dam system starts here just above St. Louis. 15 barges all can fit through those locks at one time. Now heading downstream the Gulf of Mexico is 1,200 miles. So you're down, there are no locks and dams. The river's wide open. Because our boats will push 30 or 40 barges at one time. Wow. 30 or 40 barges at one time. That sounds like a lot. You can't make a sharp right turn with that thing going. They uh, just lifted the gangway, and we are just about ready to go. Going down the river. I'm not sure how it's going to sound with the wind, but uh, it's a visual sight at this point. It's a visual shot. St. Louis, that sign day is telling me the river's at 7.8 feet and falling. Now that is just an arbitrary number. Back in the 1800s, a group of gentlemen got together to decide to mark how much the river rose and fell each year. The one year they picked the lowest spot the river fell, they called that zero or measured from that zero mark. Now, eight feet's normal on that gauge, or eight feet, we have about 20 to 30 feet of water below us, so we're right at normal right now. It's showing this spot, 26 feet of water beneath the boat. Now, folks, if you want to get your postcard shot of the arch, take that white building with the green dome. It's the old courthouse. Put the old courthouse right in the middle of the arch, and that's your postcard shot. Here's the money shot, right? The old capital. And then I'll have a helicopter ride to this next barge. We have helicopters run from 11 o'clock in the morning until dusk at night offering helicopter rides throughout the area. He's going to have a movie for him. Here's a great shot of the reflection of the sun. I was there for a second. Now it's gone. That stance was of Lewis and Clark. It was put down here in 2006 to mark the 200th anniversary of the Lewis and Clark expedition. It's supposed to show them returning to St. Louis after almost two and a half year journey out west with all they're exploring. Now, one of the back side of the statue, the front end's got their front of their boat, or big dog doing another trip with Mr. Lewis and Mr. Clark as well. Lewis and Clark. I covered a lot of their journey when I drove across the country for 22,000 miles. And that was the first one to cross the river here in St. Louis. There were a few other bridges built up north prior to this. Before these bridges opened up, all rail traffic would terminate on their bank and have to be ferried across the river. This was the first bridge to use cast steel in its construction, started back in 1867. The bridge was completed and opened for traffic on July 4th of 1874. Now we are still using the bridge today. The cars and trucks now use the top level, so the horse and buggies. This is a sidewalk, the only bridge in the downtown area you can walk across. Now the lower level of the bridge is now used by our light rail system we just saw go by called Metrolink. This is a light rail train to go from our airport in North St. Louis, about 20 miles off east of us in Illinois. You'll see it crossing the bridge every 10 minutes or so. Now the freight trains no longer use the bridge, not because of its age. Today's rail cars have gotten bigger and bigger, they won't fit underneath this bridge anymore. So it's a perfect fit for that light rail system. Right behind this bridge is old St. Louis. Beautiful cobblestone street. A lot of shops and restaurants. Beautiful. Beautiful old bridge. Two then called.
called the Veterans Bridge, and then later renamed the Islands of Noise here. Now that bridge does mark about the northernmost boundary of the original city of St. Louis. The original city consists of where the arch grounds are today. This little piece of land off to the left of us between the bridges known as the Glades Landing. Now the landing over here gives you a good snapshot of what old St. Louis looked like. All the old brick warehouses, the cobblestone streets, it's pretty much where the arch grounds look like where the arch is built. All these old warehouses are built here along the river front to store the goods coming off the steamboats. This area here has been run into restaurant bars and office spaces. Like I just said, <laughs> wasn't sure whether he was going to mention that or not. Martin Luther King Bridge now, also known as the Veterans Bridge. I think there's a stadium in the background there. And another bridge. called the Admiral of the Cruise here for years. The 1990s boat was compared to a casino. The boat operated at this spot here until about 10 years ago. They were placed by a casino halfway up the hill. They were called the Lumiere Casino. It's in that white building. Attached one with the green and blue glass, which is the Four Seasons Hotel. Now also the very top of the hill above the building is a large dome building. It's now called the Dome in America Center. It's part of our convention center. It was also open to St. Louis football Rams for 21 seasons to move back to LA here five years ago. So these pylons were where the uh, old uh, casino was. Or this pylon. It was the Ashley Street Power Plant. And that was the first generating station built west of the Mississippi River. It was built back in 1902 to supply power for the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis. Now the fair was being held to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Louisiana Purchase. The fair itself was held in Forest Park, which is about six miles off to the left of us. That's the same area where the St. Louis Zoo and the Art Museum is today. Now besides being the first fair to have electrical power, there were a few others. The ice cream cone, the hot dog, and iced tea were first served at that fair. And that plant is still under operation today. It now generates steam from any older building downtown. There's an 18-mile steam loop in the downtown area, supplying that steam is needed. Now looking right from the fub, power plant on the other side of us, that long gray concrete wall, has a St. Louis fun ball stretching 11 miles along the riverfront. The wall was built back in the 60s and 70s and has saved St. Louis from numerous floods since its completion. The highest flood record here in St. Louis occurred back in 1993. The water got within two feet from the top of that wall. That would be right at 45 more feet of water that we'll be about here today. There is a still open prosperity pushing the river back here. If he's pushing those 15 barges again, that's the most you could push above St. Louis because that's what will fit to the lock. You get a pretty good view of what he's looking at over looking at all those barges right now as we go by the rear end of them here. Now that boat is actually waiting his turn to go through the first lock. It's about five miles upstream from us here. According to my screen, it looks like we have a whole bunch of southbound boats coming through the uh, making their way down through the lock. So he simply pushes into the riverbank, waits his turn to get a phone call to come up or throw the radio to come up through the lock and never take back off. So he's just pushing the bank, biding his time, waiting to go through the first lock. Now those barges he's pushing are the most common type of barge you'll find out here on the river. Those are known as jungle hopper barges. They measure 195 feet long and 35 feet wide. Now those 15 barges right now are actually empty, but when they are loaded down, they'll sit in the water nine feet deep and handle 1,500 tons of cargo. That's equivalent to 15 rail cars or 60 trucks in each of those barges when they are loaded down. So when he clears upstream, gets his barges filled up and heads right back down, we'll have about uh, 900 truckloads of material those 15 barges is pushing <laughs> Damn. Now boats like that run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The crews on those boats work six hours on and six hours off twice a day for usually about 30 days. So in order to man a vessel like that, you would need two captains. There's what people down there waiting for us with the deck hands or something. You would need two captains, two first mates, two engineers to keep everything running, and probably four to six deck hands. But they say the most important person on that boat, folks, is the cook. If you're out there 30 days at a time, you better be eating pretty good. A good cook is worth his or her weight in gold. I can't believe that thing's going to turn that thing. You could be a barge ship. Yeah. Well, the 
fishing boat up here off to our left there along the Missouri bank there. And people are always asking, what kind of fish can you catch out here in the river? Well, the three main fish you'd be catching today would be catfish, carp, and gar. Now, most of the fishing here at St. Louis is done right off the riverbank. You occasionally catch a fishing boat or two out here. And you can also notice you don't see any recreational craft. There's three main reasons for that. First of all, generally speaking, it looks a bit skinnier here than other than the boat is about those. We've got a pretty good current still running through today, probably about three and a half miles an hour or so, and you have tow boats going up and down the river. Not the best place to have your motorboat. Now you are still allowed to do it. They come by once in a while. We have canoes and kayaks that come by as well. But most people in this area here go about 20 miles up to the north of us, a location known as Alton, Illinois. Up there in Alton, it's dammed off. So above the dam, it's quite a bit wider. You basically can take your boat where you won't get in the way. The dam also helps hold back the current. That building you see up the left of us painted up there is just an old abandoned railroad depot and warehouse they put a little color on a few years ago to kind of brighten up the area. And as you can see, he's just uh, hanging out there on the uh, edge of the uh, river. Next 1910, it's a highway structure. The second one up there is the Merchant's Bridge. It dates back to 1891 as a railroad structure. Now about a mile above that second bridge to the right around the corner is where the first lock starts in the river, lock 27. Now if you went through all 27 locks up to St. Paul, Minnesota, you can raise over 450 feet. We're about 400 feet above sea level here in St. Louis, and the river is free floating right now. Now folks here in just a second, we're going to turn around and head south into the harbor. Remind you once again, any questions, myself and my crew makes me more than happy to answer them for you. There's a barge being filled with, uh, looks like coal, I guess. So a very industrial tour. Like I said, like he said, maybe the Tennessee River is where we go. Now we're going to get some wind now. So. to talk about there's a natural reason for that that land off to the left is a natural floodplain it's flooded out for thousands of years now through the years they have built earthen levees help protect against that flooding if you look beyond those levees all you see is the very tops of trees it lets you know how much lower land is on that side of the river it is on the missouri side of this section and actually that's why st louis is built where it is today because how high it does sit out of the water Way back in the 1700s, a Frenchman from New Orleans got permission to build a fur trading post somewhere on the mouth of the Missouri River. His idea is we would try to trade furs with the Native American Indians throughout the area. Now 15 miles behind us where the Missouri River comes in is also a natural floodplain. I remember crossing by two limestone bluffs on his way upstream. Those two limestone bluffs sat right in front where the arch grounds are today. He figured that land was high enough to build his fur trading post where he would not get flooded out. End up being our city's founder, Pierre Laclede, who established St. Louis in 1764 as a fur trading facility. Beautiful bridge. Michigan on that side, I mean, sorry, Missouri on that side, and Illinois on that side. called the Bobby Sue, you can tell what he said. Get going to work. I just can't get tired of looking at that arch. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Now folks, this area off to our right here, there was a Gateway Arch National Park. The sand was set aside back in 1935 by Franklin Roosevelt. To be used as a national park that would symbolize St. Louis as the gateway to the West. Now you have to remember that's exactly what St. Louis was before the Louisiana Purchase. The United States then off to the left of us. Everything off to the right of us, including St. Louis, was French territory. Now after the Louisiana Purchase, people started heading out west. 
The last place in civilization gets supplies for your six month or so journey was right here in St. Louis. Everyone came through St. Louis by covered wagon or by river to get those supplies for their journey. Back in 1947, an open competition was held among American architects seeking a suitable design to symbolize St. Louis as this gateway. It was won by Errol Sheridan with his stainless steel arch design. The arch in the 90 acre site was completed in October of 1965, standing 630 feet tall. It's also 630 feet wide at its base. The trams taken to the top of the arch are now opened back up. Underneath the arch grounds, you can see even the visitor center is open as well. If you look right now, between the lines of the arch, the building with a spire, a gold ball, and a cross, it is the old cathedral. It dates back to the 1830s. It's a Roman Catholic church still in use today. It's actually the third church built upon land set aside by our city's father, Pierre McLean, to further be used as church property. And here comes that postcard shot again, folks. The white building with the green dome right in the middle of the arch. It's the old courthouse. Now, the old courthouse is also part of the national park. Now, they usually offer free daily tours through that building. It's closed down right now to do some renovations they're doing to that facility. That was the scene of the famous Dred Scott trial where he slaves with his owner for his freedom, as well as the starting point for three trails in the west, those being the Oregon, the Daniel Boone, and the Santa Fe trails. Pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Here's the home of the St. Louis Cardinals. So, watch those ears. Here we go right now. Alrighty, folks, the Bob Crystals. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the tour. It's another one of the many attractions I bring you from around the country and around the world very soon because I'm going to be leaving the country as soon as they let me out. Stay tuned for Costa Rica next, everybody, in the next couple weeks. But in the meantime, we, we have to go up in the arch and a few other things to uh, kill some time before the end of the month. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. Overpopulated cities around the world have caused people to become a greedy, selfish, and litigious society. Would you like to be happier, live longer, never be forgotten, and help make the world a kinder, more civil place? It's actually easier than you think. Every day you're asked, how are you? Instead of saying good, say, I am fantastic. It will make you look better, feel great, and reduce your stress. Making the world a better place starts with each person. Please join the Be Fantastic movement today. What you want to be, you can be. Be fantastic.